The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Northeast Conference on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, I would like to welcome you to the second in our special webinar series on our 2021 conference theme, Finding Our Voice, World Languages for Social Justice. This afternoon's webinar is entitled, Having Conversations About Race in Foreign Language Classrooms. This webinar has been generously sponsored by Wayside Publishing. Please visit waysidepublishing.com for more information about how Wayside can assist with your remote teaching and learning needs. If you would like to make a donation to help support our work, please visit nectful.org slash donate. My name is John Carlino, Nectful Executive Director, and I will be hosting this afternoon's webinar along with Northeast Conference board members, Jill Schimmel-Sopa and Becky Bray-Rankin as moderators. We are grateful to our presenter, Dr. Angèle Kinguet, for offering us her time and expertise. This webinar will be recorded. A link to the recording will be posted to our website at nectful.org webinars as soon as it is available. This webinar is scheduled to last one hour with 45 to 50, 50 minutes devoted to the presentation. The remaining time will serve as Q&A with the presenters to answer your questions. Attendees are submitted, encouraged to submit questions during the webinar using the question feature of the GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen. Our moderators will organize these questions and share them with the presenter either during the presentation or at the end as relevant. In the event of technical difficulties, please remain connected as you are able. If the, difficulty, <coughs> if the difficulties are on your end, please contact GoToMeeting customer support for assistance. If you're having difficulty with sound, click on phone call under audio in the control panel and call in with the number provided. And now, please let me take this opportunity to introduce you to our presenter, Dr. Angèle Kinguet. Dr. Kinguet is a professor of French and Francophone studies and special advisor to the provost for faculty development at Bucknell University. A writer and scholar of Francophone African culture and literature, she has published two novels, her second was translated in English, and a children's book translated in English and four Cameroonian languages. She led the Bucknell en France program for 15 years and has received numerous awards, including being elected as an honorary member of the American Association of Teachers of French. And she has also been awarded the University Medal of Honor from the Université de Tours and the 2016 Best of Nectful. Kangé holds a PhD in French Foreign Language Pedagogy and Second Language Acquisition from Penn State University. Dr. Kingé, thank you for sharing your time with us. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much for having me. So the talk today is entitled Having Conversations About Race in the Classroom. The spring of 2020 has profoundly marked our minds and transformed our ways of life. First, by the virus COVID-19, and secondly, by a transnational movement of protest against racial injustice sparked by the murder of George Floyd, a 46-year-old Black man who was killed by a white police officer in Minneapolis. The, br the brutality of this murder, adding to an already too long list of victims, including Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Walter Wallace, Sandra Bland, Brandy Gray, Trevon Martin, and many others, as well as the impunity with which the police officer killed Floyd in plain sight, shocked the world, driving many young people into the street under the banner of Black Lives Matter and provoking a national and even international debate on issues of racial injustice and police brutality. We are thus confronted with a double societal crisis and a double pedagogical challenge. As teachers, we are obliged to recognize 
the stakes of these momentous multiracial and multigenerational protests against racial inequality, and to question our role as human beings and as teachers in the face of this spectacle of which we are too, and of which we too are a part at once, witnesses and actors. What role can we play as language teachers? And what creative intersectional strategies can we apply in our teaching to introduce issues of race in our courses? In scrutinizing my own work and in closely observing the world we're living in today, I, real I realize that our teaching emphasis is often on instrumental, on doing, on functional notional approaches, and not on being, on living, on lived experience, on the existential. This could seem trivial to some, but it is fundamental for racialized bodies. The recent events we have witnessed are proof of this. The murder of George Floyd was incredibly shocking. What was the most shocking for witnesses of this scene was the detachment, the casualness with which the police officer killed a man in the full light of day. By contrast, what shocked the Black community, witnesses too of this intolerable act of violence who are habituated to living in the certitude of recurrent violence was the realization that their body is just a thing, an object without value, a trivial thing that can be disposed of as well. Chosification, as Aimé Césaire said, être chosifié. Every person is enveloped, embodied in this black skin that has been commodified as if it bore a life that had no value whatsoever. And the shock the despair into which this realization plunges us is incommensurable. From despair to rage, as Baldwin said, to be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all the time. Where then can we find hope? The solve without which life would be unbearable. Is it in this coalition of young people of all races who braved the streets despite the danger of COVID-19? Are these young people enraged, as James Baldwin said, and ready to act? What do they demand of us as adults, teachers, and educators? As language teachers, as teachers of culture and literature, we can bring an essential contribution to this rehumanization of the humanities. We can help to redefine what constitutes the key elements of our teaching in an intentional way. We can, and I would even say, we must put the survival and the flourishing of human being, of every human being at the center of our teaching. We cannot stand by and watch the total devaluation of human life. What affects my neighbor affects me as well. This touches upon the question of solidarity, which corresponds to an opening of interest when we pass from self-interest to the well-being of others. This solidarity also allows us to reflect on racial inequalities on violence towards women, on homophobia, and other issues. What I did, or what I'd like to do here today, is to go back to this summer and to examine what society did and how society reacted after this summer of reckoning. We witnessed a clear naming of what was happening, an articulation of the shock, the dismay, the disbelief, the anger, the outrage, and a clear sense 
that something deep had been broken. We'll call it the deconstruction. This moment was followed immediately by marches, protests, and demonstrations with various demands and sometimes violent confrontations. This began the construction phase. And as the marches were going on, people in various communities engage in deep conversations, in learning, reading. Abraham Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and Robin DiAngelo, White Fragility, were among the most read books around the country. There was a renewed, engaged collective solidarity, for the most part, in this process of unearthing and familiarizing oneself with the true historical narrative of the Black experience. This was deliberate action. So, what does this all mean for me, for us? as teachers of language and culture. What does that mean for us as educators? How do we translate what is happening in society in such a comprehensible and comprehensive way to our classroom? How do we interrogate, reform, adjust, and reshape our curricula to examine in, more, in a more intentional way what it means to be fully human? I believe we are the best position to take on this work as language and culture teachers. We are the ones who teach young people the words they use to connect with people from other parts of the world, to speak their languages and discover and experience their way of life, and to look outward, which we all know is the best training for looking inward knowing and appreciating home better, coming home to self after the hero's journey abroad. So this deconstruction, construction, and action reflection provides us context for framing our space in the classroom to have conversations about race. If we want to think critically about diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have to think about access, about belonging. We need to re redefine and understand race and racism, anti-Blackness, and the different levels of racism, interpersonal, institutional, and interiorized. The framework for anti-racism becomes the framework for how we go about this in the classroom how we convey these concepts, engage our students in these concepts. While waiting to do the big, big tasks uh, of reconceptualizing, rearticulating, and interrogating the curriculum, we have come up with language, techniques, and strategies to bring words and concepts and visual representation to teach, talk about race, racism, anti-racism and other forms of exclusions in the classroom, thus beginning to build a toolbox, our own data bank that will allow us to bring inclusive excellence to the classroom. Focusing on this framework of the construction, construction and action action slash reflection praxis, we can use this process to identify the themes, concepts, and lexicons that, we can, that can be used to choose and develop materials that will help us to bring conversations about race, racism, and anti-racism in the classroom. The question then becomes, what materials do we select? So much material is out, is out there. So how do we choose and how do we organize that material? We also have to think about our students' levels and how we break or how we can break these materials down 
as well as what strategies can most efficiently help us translate these powerful themes and concepts into our foreign language classrooms. I have chosen three clips from a film by Isabelle Bonny Claverie as a starting point, an entry point for these conversations. Why did I choose these? They are short, and yet the content is dense, with possibilities for exploring a broad variety of themes. I have chosen four excerpts for you with preview, viewing, and post-viewing activities, followed by a section, Expansion, pour aller plus loin, that offers short text from my new favorite book, Les mots indispensables du racisme, by Alexandre Messager. The comment at the back of the book is not an exaggeration. Un outil à mettre d'urgence entre toutes les mains. Very, very useful tool. This is followed by a section that brings learners home. A parallel construction, a construction parallèle, thus expanding their analytical skills as they learn to examine and talk about what is happening at home with the same ease with which they can articulate what the practices are abroad in the target language. We'll focus here on the first and third clips, but you can find the other activities in your handout. Some caveats. I know there are many resources out there, and I have indicated some I find useful. This is work in progress for all of us. What I've tried to do here is to offer a series of activities that could be easily used, adapted, or could give you some insight on what could be done. Though I know that all of you are doing an incredibly difficult job in this COVID environment. So to begin the first film, which covers la classification raciale, um, I'll go to my next slide, but um, please, if there's, if there are any questions now that um, I have laid um, this framework, if there are any questions you'd like to ask at this point uh, before we move on, uh, feel free uh, to let me know. Dr. Kinge, this is Jill Schimmel. Um, thank you. So we have a few questions in the chat, one of which is, um, what was the first book you mentioned before White Fragility? Um, uh, how, uh, the anti-racist book by Kendi Abram. Oh, Ibram Kendi, we'll put the link in the chat. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ibram Kendi. Okay. And all of that is, you know, I put everything in the handout, you know, so yeah, everything I'm mentioning is, um, you know, uh, the participant will have access to. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions? A few have asked if you'll make your slides available. Uh, I understand that the video is recorded so that this will be available, but um, yeah, obviously, yes. Thank you. Okay. So I will begin by showing you the first video then. Let me do this and, and go to the first video.
Okay, so we back then to um, to the PowerPoint. Um, yeah, Angel, that's in the control panel. Okay, so um, I think yeah, I was trying to get back to my yeah through my I'm I'm on my own here. No, uh, go into the control panel and click on show under sharing. And the handout. Okay. So right up at the top of the control panel under sharing. Okay, I see sharing. And then click on that to expand it and then click on show. Okay, there. I hadn't expanded it. Sorry about that. That's okay. So what you have here on, let me minimize this, technology, technology. So here we go. So what you have here on this very first table that I did, I was thinking about being practical for teachers who are busy, you know. So just with this table, you get an overlook, a general um, sense of what you can do with this uh, short film. So on the left on that more concept in ten, you have the words that were used on the you know in the film as uh, Ashil Mbembe, who's a historian and a philosopher, um, uh, was being interviewed by um, the the movie the director Bonnie Clabry, and so then you have expansion d'autres mots pour en parler, and then on the right uh, panel that third column there, what I've done there is to do several things. First, you see some of the key themes that you can explore with the students, including some of the philosophes des Lumières and some of what they thought about race and the construction of race. And very important because this has lasting uh, uh, ramification. So Hegel, for example, who says, uh, le nègre représente l'homme naturel dans toute sa sauvagerie. Then what you have that to, for an extension, we'll go to the activities in a second. You have the readings from the book that I mentioned um, on um, the Messager book, Les eaux humains, wonderful little excerpt. Uh, we'll go to it, La sauvagerie. And, um, you know, so let me go to the, um, to the next slide here. And so film avant de regarder, what you have here are a series of activities you can do with your students before watching the film. So these are just short, you know, captured screens from the, uh, the, the video with avant de regarder the clip. Regardez ces photos, décrivez ces trois images en répondant aux questions, um, réponses possibles, etc. So, um, you know, to again, trying to be helpful, um, you know, you have possible answers there. And so these are just ideas for avant de regarder le film. Um, and this is a more advanced activity for avant de regarder le film. Then you have pendant le film, some of the questions students can respond to. Ils ne sont pas rien, some of the expression. Ils sont moins que nos femmes. Le degré zéro de l'humanité, qu'est-ce que ça signifie? La figure de ce que nous fumes autrefois, L'homme africain n'est pas assez rentré dans l'histoire. So these are just some of the um, uh, sentences one can ask the students to, um, um, to, to comment on, you know, organize them, however. And then expansion, pour aller plus loin. Discussion questions, comment placez-vous ces images par rapport aux notions de supériorité raciale? classification des races de l'enfance. These are all the words, you know, that are um, in that first column that were mentioned before. Um, again, prolonger. So going further, les eaux humains um, from um, the Messager book. Um, then another short text that um, 
uh, will also look at la sauvagerie. And then l'Afrique répond à Sarkozy um, uh, by um, a, a number of books came out after that discours de Dakar. And so these are just ideas for what can be explored. And that's what I meant, you know, by those short films. They really opened the door to all kinds of things just in those two minutes. And of course, this, the, the, the quotes at the bottom there, um, um, Basil Davidson in his um, video series of Africa, after he's talked about those philosophers like, um, like Hegel says racism is a modern sickness and he goes on to explain. And of course the beautiful Albert Camus as a quote, il est impossible d'accepter sans révolte les signes qui apparaissent um, cette maladie, <laughs> de cette maladie stupide et criminelle. So if you look at this here and you'll see in a second why um, I chose this text, just zo humain, this is the short introduction. We're not going to go over um, through the whole text, but just the introduction is enough to even have a series of activities with students. And the reason I told you that I really enjoy this book is that you have the Ali. So their suggestions. First of all, a connection with the renvoi, um, and and you know to other themes, colonization, decolonization. But then you also have reading suggestions and even viewing suggestions. Avoir, elephant man, la monstrueuse parade, etc. You know, so I thought this was rather complete for a tiny, tiny little book. Um, so um, les eaux humains, just to read, uh, let me go back so I can read like, Cannibal australien, mâle et femelle, la seule et unique colonie de cette race sauvage, étrange, défigurée, um, et la plus brutale jamais attirée de l'intérieur. Tels étaient les mots inscrits sur les affiches ou pancartes que l'on pouvait lire au sujet d'arborigènes exhibés en cage dans différents zoos à Paris. Londres ou Berlin à la fin du 19e siècle. So what's interesting in his text when you go on to read um, what he says in the text is you can see the filiation of those ideas where some of the words that are still used today where they come from. And so when we don't know that history, you know, people are shocked and surprised, but I think to for me, an act of anti-racism is to talk about these things, to confront them, to read them, and to um, to make them um, help us understand and be able to articulate our opposition to ideas and so on and so forth. Um, um, le phénomène des eaux humains a sévi plus particulièrement dans les pays qui étaient à la tête d'empires coloniaux dans la France. Um, C'était une façon pour les Européens de montrer l'importance de la toute puissance de l'Empire, etc. Um, and so, parallel construction, we come back home. Very recently, uh, Senator Allen's words came back and he used the word macaca. Macaca, c'est un singe. So, where does that come from? So you had so human where people were part black like animals. So you can see the affiliation of ideas. And I think that's what's interesting in teaching. Seek to further elaborate and continue the discussion of the subhuman racial identity and white supremacy in parallel with the US. So finding this language in American society through new sources is interesting. Not too long ago, uh, former President Reagan's words came out when the tape were released where I think he was comparing, you know, he was using the same language as well, like something about, you know, like monkey that were wearing shoes. So these ideas didn't fall from the side. So we go from les philosophes des lumières, you know, into that being articulated, accepted in society to these colonial practices um, uh, and, and, and then uh, we know that you just don't erase what is part of a culture and process and that is long. And as uh, Gandhi said in that quote at the beginning, you don't legislate these things. It's only through education, only through education. And education, not just hero, a narrative, all of the narratives. 
So the activity acknowledges the roots and impact of white supremacy. That's really the importance of this activity for me. You know, it's important in articulating the filiation, you know, filiation of ideas and how they translate into behaviors and actions, you know, which, you know, Césaire named um, chaudification et être chaudifié. So in my introduction at the beginning then, when I mentioned how people looked at the death of George Floyd, the way it was in that kind of deliberate manner and so on, these are the, that's what, these are the echoes. These are the echoes. As much as you hear echoes in behavior, they're echoes in actions. You know, and when we make those kind of affiliations, it's not just one group of people who understand them. Everybody, all of us understand um, these concepts, these feelings, and, and these actions, and the weight of those actions. Um, so, um, let us go to the next film, and let me be... Um, um, que je fasse très attention ici. Donc, donc here we go. Um, Microsoft. Um, je vais être dans le deuxième film. Non, non, pas le deuxième film. C'est ça. To have a good film. So, interesting excerpts there. So, the topic is la discrimination au quotidien. I want to call it the discrimination, as they've often called it, banal, just that we all know it's not banal. So, um, also here we have some avant de regarder questions um, pendant le clip et après avoir regardé. So, again, the table, similar to what I did before, I'm going to go a little faster to leave some questions, but this is an excerpt that's really rich, you know, so the key thing here are the words from Guerlain. So, there's the insult in the metro, um, and, but the focus of most of my activities here are around Berlin. So deconstruire les mots de Berlin, if you go there, uh, to your right, to the thème apparenté. So Guerlain is making a contradictory statement. So first he says, um, j'ai dû travailler comme un nègre. So the question is, what exactly is le travail nègre? Let's dig a little bit into it. So let's go back, way back to during slavery. What was the daily life of enslaved people. 
So we can find an excerpt and there'll be one coming, you know, a little later, I'll pass through, I'll just walk you through um, um, the various activities here. So we found one and an interesting activities could be to have students, you know, go through it. And so let's try to outline what they do. And that opens the door to vocabulary, it worked on the farm, on the plantation, in the house, et cetera. Then the next thing was, oh, let's also look at the kinds of works often reserved to minorities, to black people. And then see another activities. Um, another activity is how about work that's not seen, invisibilized work, not recognized, not remunerated. So, and then another activity could be on the contradiction. On the one hand, Guerlain says, travailler comme un aide. And on the other hand, he says, well, I don't really think they work. So which one is it? So that would be a very interesting activity also with students. And then there's a reading text for expansion, Les Préjugés, and, um, and a wonderful discussion out of uh, NPR, uh, there's the transcript in that, on the word black, you know, who's black, who's negre, and so we can play with the word and so, and have the parallel construction with uh, the word, the N word, and colored, and black, and African American, et cetera. So, just from you know what what I wanted you to be able to see from this tableau was just the plethora of you know activities uh, that could be done just with this short video. Um, of course, I'm, I know you're going to come up with even more activity than I did. So, avant de regarder le clip here. So, again, some saisie you know, of some of the signs that people had during the march, you know, and one of them, Noir et Fier, which reminds us of James Brown, say loud, I'm black and proud, you know, so you see, as you look at those protests, you see these parallels um, between um, what's happening here and what's happening in France, for example. Um, so then, expliquer ses expressions, tu sais que t'es noir quand, and so that was while well, um, watching the clip. These are some of the, the activities. Um, students, you can engage your student. Um, um, you can uh, get your student um, um, to really have some interesting discussions about those um, expressions. Um, then, pour aller plus loin, um, again, um, some more questions, uh, questions de discussion. Um, et après, après avoir regardé le clip, Une journée, activité 1, une journée de travail dans la vie d'un esclave, le quotidien d'un esclave, expérience, témoignage. We have, you know, enslaved, you know, narratives, you know, all over the place, you know, you just go to Google and they, and even if it's an exercise in translation. So what I'm showing here is that it opens the door to le vocabulaire du quotidien, plantation, la maison, les activités, y compris donc, you can, you know, les, les, les structures, les structures uh, grammaticales qui vont avec uh, le quotidien, ils se lèvent, etc. Et donc, so I'm not going into these details because I'm sure you can see right away what you can um, do with these activity. Um, aspect culturel, le rôle des esclaves dans le développement de l'évolution de la cuisine du sud des États-Unis, leur influence sur la cuisine. So if we're talking about the work that enslaved people did, a lot of it was cooking in homes and so on. And then that can take us to interrogating the images that are left from those experiences, like Aunt Jemima, um, Uncle Ben's, um, and in France, we have Yabon Banania, but the history of Yabon Banania is different because in France, the chef rem remains French, whereas here, um, um, you know, particularly back then, the cooking was done uh, by uh, Black people. So here's an activity I pulled out from the internet. You know, this is a témoignage from a pastor and the life of an enslaved person. Ils vont au jardin, ils cultivent la plantation, sont réveillés avant l'aurore par le claquement du fouet du commandeur et um, chargés d'inspecter leur conduite. À midi, on leur accorde deux heures pour prendre du repos, mais pour aller préparer leur repas. À deux heures précises, le commandeur appelle les esclaves à la plantation et le travail jusqu'à la nuit, etc., etc. Aussi, l'excès de fatigue tue-t-il bientôt ceux qui y sont soumis. 
So that really puts the students into, um, into that particular space where they're interacting with an experience. Um, activité de autour des métiers, encore, éboueur, chauffeur de taxi, femme de ménage, serveur, caissier. Um, and then we're going to look at a campaign publicitaire that we, you know, in a second. Then the third activity, le travail non reconnu. You know, so we know of several inventions made by slaves that were not so, that could be a research project. What was invented that was never attributed? The music in industry with issues of appropriation, recognition. And then a very interesting, that could open an, another door, le nègre de, when you say ghostwriter in France for the longest time, it was le nègre. But it took a whole process to have it adopted, uh, to have prête plume, which is officially what should be used now, um, and this was done by Nelly Buffon, and there was a whole process to get it recognized officially. Uh, I forget the name of the organization that one, not, not the Académie Française, another specific uh, um, uh, organization. So, travailler comme un nègre, en même temps que la paresse des Noirs, as Guerlain says, opens the door for interesting, interesting discussions. And then, as you're doing the prolongement, back to the US with what just happened, la question de la représentation des Noirs dans la publicité. So we just learned that and the image has been removed, you know, the Anjamana image um, and, and the Uncle Ben's image. So the, the equivalent in France will be Yabon Banania. So again, this controverse autour de ces représentations, disparition des images, etc. So, that could open the door for a discussion. And we, we can go further with the N-word, Negro, colored, Black, African, et cetera, and go into, in France, you know, it's people say Black. To refer to a Black person, they say in English, oh, c'est un Black, but they don't say Noir. So it's like Black is an, <laughs> it's an upper Noir. So what does that mean? You know, so again, um, and then we can go into the toppling of statues, you know, so that's again another, you know, theme for discussion. And here we have the statue of Louis XIV in the USA, in Missouri, in St. Louis, and the statue of Colbert in Paris, who is auteur du Code de Noir. So another activity, travail de recherche sur le Code de Noir. Qu'est-ce que le Code de Noir? Quand a-t-il été instauré? Quelles en sont les ramifications aujourd'hui encore? So these are just, I think I'm going to stop there, you know, for questions. But these are just some of the activities um, that we can continue. Um, just the next film is very interesting because it talks about who's what, you know, and finding your roots. And, and I have this actor here who has black roots that he found out in finding your roots. But for that, we have to watch um, excerpt too, but you'll do that on your own. Um, let me leave some time here for questions. Um, Merci, Angel. Um, so we do have a number of questions that I'll try to group together a little bit. So we have some questions about the effect of some of these discussions on our Black students. So particularly when we're reading some of these things, um, the effect on them, should we give them some sort of a safe space separate if they don't want to engage or how do we engage them? What are your thoughts on those? Oh, my thoughts on those, I mean, it's, it's all, I'm almost spontaneous. Doing it, that's why I'm very careful in the way I construct, because the Black students want to see that something is being done about it. I don't think that Black students are, at least, you know, then again, I'm teaching college students, right? College students, what they, what they find sad is when these things happen and everybody behave as if everything is normal. That's not safe. That's invisible. It's, it's rendering invisible. You know, what needs to be done is or, or, or talking about it as if it only happens in France. It doesn't happen in the U.S. So when we talk about, oh, we're going to talk about les questions raciales, then we're going to talk about le hijab en France and this and that. It's always coming home to finding equivalence. 
and showing what people are doing. So for young students, seeing other young black people taking charge, protesting, learning words to say, that's very empowering. And in fact, the um, excerpt from NPR to show how the change of that name came about was from a young black man who came from the US and went to France and was taught that they were using black there instead of noir. You know, so bringing that discussion out in the open, I think our students will appreciate it because um, I can see how one can feel that way with the first video. But if you look at these videos, they're immediately followed by a video where they're action, you know, by people and, and what they're doing, what this young woman is doing. Going to, she's digging because when she tells her own story, she was bothered. She was never an activist, and she goes, she heard this, and she said, "That's it. I'm taking to the street." So it's encouraging and empowering, I would say. Thank you. Another question um, has come from a few um, people who have identified as white female teachers. And they wonder mm -hmm. in what ways they could particularly provide a safe space um, in making these conversations happen, if there are certain strategies that they might be able to take that might be different than some of the strategies that you took. Um, I would say that these are strategies that everybody can use. My, my little story is always, I understand when Quincy Jones wanted to, Jones um, uh, went to Spielberg, to ask him to make the movie, to direct the movie, The Color Purple, right? He'd bought the rights for the novel and he wanted Spielberg to direct it. And apparently Spielberg had said, this is what I heard, you know, that he had not worked with black people before. And Quincy Jones responded, uh, neither have you worked with extraterrestrial, yet you made a movie that made the entire world, you know, cry you know, over ET. And, and so that's where I think that students know authenticity. That's all. A person who's white, there's a, 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 a site that I put in my, uh, in the handout, and I, you know, maybe I'll remember to go back and make some quick notes on, on that handout. But it, it, on that handout, um, it, I think the presenter who is with ACL, he says something like, as you're sitting there, you didn't own any slaves, you didn't enslave people and so on. So I think it's about getting out of the guilt, getting out of the white guilt. You're a te teacher. As teachers, we are committed. You know, it's like me, but now teaching white students about colonization. In fact, my work about how to teach started that way. Because they all they did was feel guilty, like this black woman is sitting and standing in front of us, and we're talking about no, let's get out of it. That's when I got into parallel construction. Let's compare, let's find things that we're doing, let's let's categorize, let's look. We're looking at a situation. We're not responsible, or we are responsible as human, all of us. But as a teacher, you want to shed light. So we tend to go towards heroes narratives, you know, they feel good narratives. And then um, in class, Isabel Wilson talks about it very well. And then something blows up and we surprise. So I think uh, just being authentically self learning, which is part of the framework, you know, learning, figuring out, searching um, and, and being thoughtful about activities, but really, um, I think students perceive that. They perceive what we're trying to do. And as, as we look at what's happening elsewhere, and as we're asking everybody, not just that black student, I think that is where the discomfort will come from, when the black students becomes the representative. No, race is everybody's problem. And they don't need, and if they want to share the experience, let them share it, but they don't have to. They can just participate in the activity. And so um, I, I think that would be my take on it. Thank you. 
Uh, I have one more question sort of along that line and then a few more if we still have time. Um, so one person says that they've been hesitant to create activities that invite students to role play responses from a different racial identity than the one that they identify from. Could you talk about mm -hmm. some challenges you faced with those types of activities? Uh, I don't do that kind of role play. In fact, as I was doing my own research for this presentation, I saw particularly in France, and, and because the French have, you know, they have a different history, um, 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 you know, in, in this racial context. I saw a lot of role play. I did not like them. They made me uncomfortable. They made me uncomfortable. So I don't do that. I don't do the role play. You be this and 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 so on. Um, uh, for no. No, I don't go into the role play unless it's an activity that talks about, particularly if you're going to go into the racial, to dig into racial issues, you know, I think it's too much of a burden to put on people. So personally, I like to show it. That's why I like clips. So we're looking at people and we're commenting on what's going on. I think there's plenty there to deal with, but then again, this is this is my own limited experience. And as I said, um, you know, I didn't even uh, get into my conclusion <laughs> in in all of this. I didn't get into my conclusion. But um, uh, in 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 all of it, this is really um, about beginning a conversation and for me it's a work on, in progress and as i hear those questions i'm hoping that i'm gonna have those questions i'm hoping that they'll be captured and in looking at them so that i can also begin to think about um different people in different setting and 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 how you know what i might suggest you know or what i'm hearing you know from other colleagues and people who are other people who are doing this work about how to tackle it in ways that makes everybody comfortable. That's a really, really important book. Oh, I, I got it. It's called How This Book is Anti-Racist. This book is anti-racist. You will find answers there. This is a woman who really, I think she focuses on, you know, from kindergarten to, um, to the 12th grade. And she and it's a fabulous book, you know, because in, in a um, and for another presentation, I talked about le racisme expliqué à ma fille. This it's a magical book in that sense. I don't, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to go into all the resources that I thought, but that one is a key one. And I think to that degree, I even put it in the resources here on my PowerPoint. Probably, you know, this book is anti-racist. Um, um, Someone, so on the PowerPoint, I, so I gave you a handout, but on the PowerPoint here, it, her name is Tiffany Jewell. So for the people who just asked me this question about how to approach it, I think Tiffany has done a lot of work there. And, I, and she also has um, a handout that can be downloaded to work with her book. When I ordered this book, because I was curious as to what she was doing, I, it took probably two, uh, two months for me to get my copy. You know, and so for a, a younger audience also, although I've used it in college, Muriel Diallo, I know her because she illustrated my children's uh, book, uh, Qui est dans la lune, Le mineur et le boulanger, delicious. So the white person is a um, mineur, so he works in a place where he comes out looking black, and the black person is a baker, and he works in a space where he comes out looking why? And when they come out of work, you can't tell their race. I mean, it's for children, of course, it's a so qui est noir, qui est blanc. It's that whole play with race and construction. So these are the kinds of things that you can do with students that really engage them. And it's not about, you know, people and their feelings and, and so on, even though it's okay to acknowledge those feelings. There's nothing wrong with, you know, and if people want to share those feelings, um, they may. Um, yeah. Angela, can I ask one more question before we pass it back over to John? Oh, cool. um, some people have asked specifically about um, words that show up in texts or words that they might use in the classroom, and then particularly most recently, 
um, with the, the teacher, the middle school history teacher in France who was killed, and then I'm reading too that maybe something happened in Ottawa. Um, how can we as teachers uh, choose our words really carefully and make sure that we're bringing up good conversations um, and making sure that we're moving in a positive direction when some of these other fearful activities are happening around us? Yeah, and, and I think in France, you know, I don't know about the Ottawa situation. It, it, I mean, it's tragic. I watch, I have TV5 here at home and I watch the whole ceremony, just heartbreaking, literally. Um, it, it's, um, I think if we go back to the, um, the beginning of the talk and with Einstein's uh, quote on, um, you know, on uh, l'atom, Il est plus facile. Um, I, I can't remember exactly. I'm moving towards um, the beginning of the quote there. About il est plus facile de um, de dénicher un atome. Les préjugés ne um, voilà. Il est plus facile de désintégrer un atome qu'un préjugé. That that's really that space. And I I, I think it's overused. I keep going to authenticity and intentionality. Really. Because le préjugé est là, and people, and that's why we have to do this work of talking, of even something I didn't get a chance to talk much in, in an hour. It's, it's this whole sense of belonging, of visibilizing everybody. So the way we treat people in the classroom, not to say that it will, you know, people were treated badly and so on, you know, the prejudice is prejudice, and when that has been ingrained, um, these are the consequences and that's what we all witness whether it's the murder of george floyd or the murder of the teacher that's what we're trying to avoid and for me really it's been about doing the work even at but now um we're doing it with a broader community uh associate provost for inclusion and for, for and, and um and that diversity and and um and inclusion um or inclusive excellence as we say it um, at Abaknav, it's, it's really, we're doing that with the broader community. But when we come, and, and my colleague Nikki Young, she comes at it from a generous place. But from a generous place, you can say things that are very truthful and very honest. It's not about taking people for granted and pretending that things did not happen. Not that we do it to hurt, we sometimes do it because we're trying to protect people and but I think being generous is going to the truth much like the model when this happened and everybody hit the book the book a, a book that's very uncomfortable I believe for a lot of white people is white fragility I think the title for me is um, we can have a better title but um, you know anyway so I'm, I'm gonna stop there because I can go on and on you know but um, Thank you. White Fragility, um, all of those books are great, you know, for exploring. Thank you, Dr. Kinge. And um, we'll turn it back over to John for some closing remarks, but thank you. And I can tell all the attendees enjoyed your chat and look forward to reviewing the resources. Thanks. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Kinge, for that very informative presentation. And thank you, Jill and Becky, for moderating. Um, we, we got some comments after our last webinar that people are so familiar with Zoom now, um, they missed the ability to chat with each other in the sidebar. But unfortunately, that's simply just not possible with a, a webinar where over 600 people were registered. But we did see all of your comments coming in. We'll save the chat um, and, and share it with Dr. Kinge afterward. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, it has been recorded and the recording will be made available on our website tomorrow. If you'd like to make a contribution to help support our webinar, please visit nectful.org slash donate. New York State teachers who need proof of attendance for CTLE credit, please use the links provided on our website on the webinars page. Teachers in other states may use the same links, but please consult your local district and or state regulations regarding documenting PD hours. On behalf of the Northeast Conference Board of Directors, thank you for attending this afternoon's webinar. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you again, Angèle.